Senator Justin Smith Morrill of Vermont had a clear vision for higher education in 1862. First, he wanted to make education available to students of forthcoming generations, particularly in critical fields of agriculture and mechanical arts. Second, he wanted to make knowledge available to local communities through teaching, research, and service. When we go back in history, on July the 2nd, 1862, we were in the middle of a civil war, our darkest hour as a nation, and yet we had a group of very inspired elected officials who, rather than being constrained by the circumstances of the time, decided to envision a better and brighter future by educating the sons and daughters of the working families of America. In the 150 years since the signing of the Morrill Act, land-grant colleges and universities in the United States have seen their influence expand beyond the borders of their states to the entire nation and even to the world. With each succeeding generation of graduates, we have constantly faced new challenges, made bold choices, while continuing to educate tomorrow's champions. APLU joins with our member universities in celebrating 150 years of accessible and affordable higher education in America. America's public and land-grant universities have faced new challenges head-on discovering innovative ways to continue their mission in learning, discovery, and engagement. Well, we're, we're challenged by the fact that, uh, the, uh, that food security is at risk uh, globally, uh, that uh, energy supplies will be escalating in costs, largely due to the demise of uh, the, the base resources with respect to fossil fuels, and uh, also uh, because uh, our, our pipe pipeline is broken with respect to K-12 through education. We're not providing the investment to ensure that we'll have sufficient scientists and engineers uh, for the future. Certainly we have a major research mission at the university and we need to do a better job in doing research that has the capacity to be transferred into technology and help that transfer of technology occur. Certainly we have a long history of that, particularly in the agricultural sciences and natural resources, but we need to have that same mission across the entire university. For a long time, the threefold mission of public higher education, particularly public research universities, was uh, teaching, research, and public service. And uh, within the last 10 years, almost all public higher education institutions have added a fourth uh, leg to that stool, which is economic development. So we're being asked to take uh, the, a smaller pool of resources and use that smaller pool of resources to do even more than we've done in the past. Since the signing of the Morrill Act, our world has been shrinking, while the role of our public and land-grant universities has continued to expand in global proportions. Well, I think our tradition of community engagement has been a strength and uh, it really will be our pathway to the future. It's really with our community partners that we'll solve these complex problems, whether they be in the areas of health, education, energy. Land-grant universities are uh, specifically endowed with capabilities that would, that would assist in addressing some of the global crises because we have a long-term history with respect to extension, not only agriculture extension, but nutritional extension, uh, urban extension, rural development. Well, the University of Florida is the state's land-grant institution, and as such, we feel that we have a special mission to bring our expertise to aid not only the industry and the economy of Florida, but also the citizens of Florida. How many young men and women have passed through our classrooms and into the working world in towns and cities across our nation? Through the Morrill Act, we not only are sending graduates, but as institutions, 
also engaging with those communities ourselves. And we need to be educating young men and young women that can go out and pursue careers that can fit in society and be effective and efficient members of society and also be good citizens. Um, I see engagement at Land Grant Universities as being a strategy, not a program. A strategy for accomplishing our institutional priorities, whether they be uh, internationalizing the institution, certainly engagement with the community is one way to accomplish that, uh, whether it's doing interdisciplinary work, our societal issues are inherently interdisciplinary, whether it's doing quality teaching, uh, all the best practices, high impact practices, have some community engagement, experiential component tied to them. Well, one of the programs that I can think about would be our focus on Southside, Virginia. Southside has been devastated by uh, um, the loss of industry. It's traditionally focused on tobacco, textiles. Um, we've worked with that community, the community leaders there, community members to uh, extend our research and consider new ways to uh, tackle employment issues. Really a holistic view of how a university can listen and be a part of community development, economic development. As we move beyond this point of marking the sesquicentennial of the Morrill Act, America's land-grant and public universities know that we will continue to face new challenges in fulfilling our mission for the global community. We also know that we will need to be courageous in meeting those challenges with bold choices as we implement new initiatives in learning, discovery, and engagement as we educate tomorrow's leaders. Today we celebrate 150 years of the Morrill Act. Tomorrow we begin anew facing the challenges of the 21st century. <laughs>